How many know God is with us today? Amen. And the uh, message I want to talk to you about today is something you may, may think is simple, but I believe it's becoming more and more important as we see the days growing closer of Jesus coming back. And I want to talk to you about truth. And truth is one of the is the word of God, in case you don't know. I'm going to prove that to you. And, uh, you know, I'm getting ahead of my message, but, uh, you know, most people, they want to tell you the truth of the situation, and that's another word for they want to tell you their opinion. Amen. And how I many know everybody has an opinion? Right. Don't fill in the old answers. Yeah. <laughs> Heard your mind in Jesus' name, <laughs> Hebrews 9, 14. <laughs> but everybody has an opinion, and how many know, unfortunately, most people judge all their actions by their opinions today. When the Bible says we're to uh, live according to the Word of God, and the Word of God we're going to see and look at in the Word today is the only uh, truth. It's the only one that matters. So whatever we do, we should be doing by the word of God. And how many know Jesus is the truth? Amen. His, the Bible says he is the way, the truth, and the life. So he, he's the word. And uh, so we're going to look at some things. But it's a, how many know the Bible? The word says the Bible is a two-edged sword. Mm -hmm. It'll cut you free from stuff you shouldn't be messing with. And it'll cut you free from stuff the enemy's trying to assign to you. Right. Right. I mean, the Bible says, I touched on the last few weeks, the Bible says, no weapon formed against you shall wow. prosper. I mean, well, that is truth. <laughs> and when you apply that truth, it has power, cutting to very asunder of your very soul, of setting you free from every assignment from the pits of hell. I mean, we've been experiencing that. Yes. But how I many know well, sometimes you need to look on the truth on the other side? Maybe you've been doing stuff over and over again, and you need to know why you've been doing it, and you've got five million opinions on it, and it's time to stop using opinions and start using the Word of God. Amen. Big smile. How do we do that? Well, we study to show ourselves approved the Word, been rightly dividing the Word of God, the truth. I mean, I, listen, even as I've got closer to God, I get, I get more and more of a clearer truth of the truth of God. And I'm here to tell you there's no, I'm going to come down here for a moment if that's all right. I'll leave the camera up here. Well, no. Uh, Deaconess. Hopefully it still works all the way back there. Oh, we've already got people logging off. Y'all forgive me. Y'all forgive me to get to heaven. Talking to the people online. <laughs> They're like, but we miss worship, Pastor. I'm sorry. Lord. So, I may know, before I, get, I jump into this, we're going to look at double, double at both sides of it today, and I've got a ton of scriptures here for you, so just hold on. Uh, how many know there's no gray areas in the Word of God? Amen. Amen. And when I was first coming back to God, we're going to talk about one that... Uh, God really drove home this point to me. And as I was meditating this morning, the Lord said, when you finally decided there was no gray area, and even though that you had been told all your life it was a gray area, it, no long, it not only set you free from that gray area, it set you free from every gray area that the enemy had ever tried to assign to the Word of God. <clears throat> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. If you haven't experienced that yet, hold on. You made before the day's out. <laughs> yeah. Because whenever you finally decide that there's no gray area, that you must, you may not, you just may not, or you do not, just have not learned the whole truth on that subject yet. Because God does not, he, he's not the author of confusion. <laughs> There's no, he, he's not trying to twist you up and trip you up. He wants you to make heaven. He gave his only begotten son that none should perish and all should have everlasting life. So he's not playing games with your life. He's not trying to make it harder on you. It just means you don't know the truth yet. How many have, have, have gotten involved with some things and the more truth you learn, the more you even kind of changed your opinion on something? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm here to tell you the word of God is the same way. You're like, well, how do I know? Well, man. <laughs> 
He's Jesus and he don't change. That's one thing. Amen. And his opinion don't change. His word don't change. But you have to know the truth. Now, do you want to know the first, the first thing I had to do that was hard for me? Learning the truth about myself. Being truthful with myself. Why did you want to do that? Well, sometimes I had to say because it felt good or it made me feel vindicated. None of you have ever been there, I know. But help me know that truth is, is that's being in your flesh. And we want to walk in the glory and the goodness of God. Amen. We've been talking about that. How I many one revival? He came to set our feet up, up on high places. We want to have those things. But in order, the Bible says, who the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible also says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Not just, not just uh, set you free. It says it will actually make you free. Now, that means he's doing all the heavy lifting. He's, he's doing all the stuff that the devil says, you can't be free from that. You're just bound to that all your life. Whatever it is, physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially. But God says, if you'll get the truth of the matter, boom, I will make you free. I will break every bond, every chain, everything that's there. Whatever it is. Or maybe it's the thing that the enemy on the other foot, on the other two edges, or maybe the enemy's telling you, well, you can never be that person. Why are you even trying? Well, I'm not. King's kid. I'm a co heir with Christ. I'm seated in heavenly places. That's who I am. That's the truth. The truth isn't who the devil tells you are. The truth is who the word of God says you are. Amen. And when you start learning the more of the truth about it, you'll start changing your mind and your perception and it will set you free. Ooh, I'm preaching now. Come on. But the only, the, the, the weapon you have is called truth. But every day he gets muddled and the enemy is a good muddler. And he will muddle in your life all day on both sides of the sword. He doesn't care as long as the truth is perverted. Right, right. Come on. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to tell you my one gray area that, that ended up setting me more free than I'll ever know. And usually it causes controversy every time that I say it. But why? Because most people haven't got the truth and some of them don't want the truth on. <laughs> and it, for those that's been around, it's kind of a running joke now. And there was a lot of people that didn't know the truth. And some people uh, were even hostile with me at first. And guess what? I didn't, we didn't get in an argument. I just kept presenting the truth until all of a sudden they said, you know what? I think that's the truth. Do you see what I'm saying? I didn't beat nobody over the head with it. And, but if you want to know on the subject I'm about to go, you might ask some of those around you and they will tell you I have an obscene amount of information <laughs> and scripture on this subject because I'm not someone just to lightly say something. Right. Although I might do it up here, but I can promise you there's mega stuff behind it, okay? When I came back to the Lord, I was doing an eight ball of meth a day and slinging dope coast to coast smoking four packs of cigarette and drinking as much as I wanted to drink whenever I needed to drink. Not a very nice man, not proud of it, but it got instantly delivered me from cigarettes from drugs and all those things. I, I picked up the smoking again for several years because I didn't want to preach. And he finally got rid of that. But all my life I've been told, you know, well, Jesus made a little wine for this. So this guy would have, a, you know, that, that drinking was a gray area and everybody left this thing gray. And, all my life, I've been told these things, and I can see a little bit of the word over here, but then I've seen where no drunkard would enter heaven, that wine's a mocker. Well, then why in the world would God tell you to do something? Why would he make something that's a mocker? That doesn't sound like my God at all. So, oh, but, so what is the truth? Now, I didn't come to preach against alcohol this morning. I'm telling you my first time that I used a truth bomb that set me free, that set me free from tons of other lies of the enemy. Are you with me? So I went to research, I went to searching and searching and searching, and I still had well-meaning preachers, not Pastor Billy at the time, that would say, well, it's just a gray area. Well, you know, gray areas muddle the truth. Come on, are you, and I'm, I'm here to tell you, but God said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, so why would he not follow his own law? Right? And so anyways, to make a long story short, you can look it up. He, yeah, Because listen, my thing was, is I needed to know because I knew myself. 
And I, I knew it was something, if nobody else would want to mess with it, I knew it was something I shouldn't be messing with. Come on. But here's the thing. If I had permission in that gray area, I would have had permission in every gray area. Why? Because it wasn't the truth. So when I found the truth, the truth is, is that, you know, drunkards are for heaven. And here's the other truth that I, I dug in, if you want to get to the thicker. It would take a 55-gallon drum of the wine that Jesus made to cop a buzz. If you feel like drinking 50, it wasn't fermented, there was no yeast in it. And if you feel like sitting down and chugging 55 gallons of it, knock yourself out. Come on. Because the Bible says do not drink the king's wine. What's the difference between the king's wine and the regular wine? The king's wine had yeast in it. They learned how to make that stuff cop a buzz. See, the truth. It didn't take long, did it? No. Do you see what I'm saying? The Bible says you shall know the truth, and the truth should make you free. If you're listening, had an open heart in just about 20 seconds, I just set you free from alcohol. Praise God. And all the misconceptions the devil trying to tell you. Well, they had wine at the bar to make. You know, everybody that says that, I guarantee you, they're, 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 they're as lukewarm as they can get, and they're trying to <laughs> straddle the fence as far as they can go. How will they be free when they admit to themselves and learn the truth that, you know, they're also usually the ones, when is Jesus coming back? How do I know the signs? Not because they're joyfully waiting for them. They want to see how long they got to get their act together. How do you know that? Because I was one of them. Don't be a fool, and so were you. And that's how you were dreaming me so much. Well, that Tyler, holier than now, come on. But I moved past it. I learned the truth. And I've learned there's peace and there's joy and there's all kinds of great things. Because it ain't just about learning the truth about what I shouldn't do. It's learning the truth about who I am in Christ. Mm -hmm. Learning the authority that I have in Christ. Come on. Mm -hmm. I was sitting down here. You were sent down here to raise hell. R-A-Z-E. That means to abolish, destroy. Come on, that's the truth. The devil didn't come. He wants to convince you you were sent down here to be a punching bag. You are not a punching bag. You are a warrior for Christ. Amen. More than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. That is the truth. Amen. Yeah. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When you start waking up inside, you start getting free. Yeah. But if you don't know the truth on the subject, well, the doctors hand me this, this, and this. It is what it is. God's in control. He is. And he, he gave, he went down and already whipped Satan, made a show of him openly, and defeated him once and for all. He ain't going to come do it again. Quit begging him to do something he's already done and start walking the authority that you have because he gave you authority upon this earth and you start cursing that thing through the Christ that's in you, not in your own strength, but he that's in you. 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. When you get a hold of that truth nugget, it starts changing things. Do you, do you, are you going to know it all? No, nobody knows it all. But the more truth you get, the more powerful it is, and the bigger your sword. But all day long, listen, the Bible says that he's a liar and the accuser of the brethren. Do you think he's changed his tune? No. No, he is going to, Satan is going to lie and deceive and distort and call it bring confusion all day long if he can. And listen, either the Bible says you're either serving God or you're serving Satan. Now listen, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, the prince about his virtue wickedness in high places. But if they ain't a Christian, the enemy can use it. Now, do we get mad at them? No, we pray for them and set them free. But quit listening to the Bible says do not see that on ungodly counsel. Quit listening to lost people and take advice. They ain't giving you the truth. <laughs> They're just causing confusion. Amen. Get in the word of God and find out what it has to say. Well, I'm confused with who you've been listening to. It sounds simple when I say it today because that's what the truth does. It exposes things and makes it sound simple. But when you leave here, it won't seem so simple. Well, I don't know. What they said sounded pretty good, Pastor. Well, what's the Bible say? I don't know. Well, you should have started there. Come on, I'm preaching good this morning. Amen. How many here want to start walking with have a move of God? Amen. Want to see people saved, set free, and delivered. Amen. Well, then you've got to get to the truth of the matter. But the first person you've got to have a real good truth talk with, with, with is you. Amen? 
You know, every day I have a talk with the truth with me. What do you say, Pastor? Well, I hold up the Word of God as a mirror to myself, and I start checking myself before I wreck myself, and I start trimming up things that don't line up with the Word of God and putting my attitude back in check and start doing all the things that make me the man of God that I am so that when I come up here, i got something to offer you than, than flowerly words. If you would judge yourself, you shall not be judged. James says, don't be as a man looking in the mirror who sees what he's supposed to be and then turns and walks away and forgets it. That man didn't know, didn't, didn't want to look at the truth. He saw the truth, but he did not want to adjust it. That's good preaching, Pastor. How many would like to, I would give you a ton of Bible. You want to look at some verses this morning? John 8, 32. John 8, 32. I'm going to go fast. By the way, just to, as a little tidbit, this is one of those little tidbit facts. I found this, uh, I just, for some reason, it just it, it clicked with me, and we'll probably elaborate more later on. Truth, this type of truth is mentioned 234 times in the Bible. 234 times the Bible talks about having this level of truth. I think... He takes it pretty serious. Come on. How many of you know that, uh, in case you didn't know it, I've been a pastor for, I don't know, 25 years. Do you know it's not people's human nature to tell the truth? Do you know I've caught people and stuff 24-7? But I'm a good pastor and I don't, I don't bail them out. Most of the time I pray for them, set them free. And I've seen people change. Their characters change. The way they act, the way they respond to things. And, you know, a lot of times there's, there's tons of reasons why people that way. Sometimes they're insecure. Sometimes there's all kinds of why. But the truth gets down to it. They don't know the truth about themselves and who they are in Christ yet usually. And so they're trying to build themselves up to the image they think they're supposed to be. That's one thing that happens. You see what I'm saying? I know none of you were over there. It's okay. But how do you deal with that? Well, you stop looking in the mirror, stop looking in the truth mirror and walking away. You start really dealing with it, you know? You know, today, today, right now at this moment, there's still things about myself that I don't really like, that I'm still working on. But the good news is, is I don't have to have some other prophet come over and tell me because me and Jesus and the Holy Spirit's already working on it. And he knows it and I'm looking at the truth head on and I'm dealing with it. Come on. So 832, and you shall know the truth. So what's the first thing you got to do? No. You got to know the truth. You got to study to show yourself approved. If you want to walk, walk, start walking in, in this kind of level of truth and have that double-edged sword going, you're going to have to know it. Well, Pastor, I don't want to. Well, that's a good <laughs> truth to first to start with. <laughs> I ain't going to beat you up for that. <laughs> Hey, guess what? You just got your first truth out of the way. Yeah. But I'm going to encourage you that, well, you ain't got to know everything, but you got to start somewhere. Do you know the first few times I read the Bible through, I know I've said this before, it was like eating dry crackers for me. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. It was like dry crackers with no water. And I thought I was getting absolutely nothing out of it until I went to a point after that uh, of just some absolute turmoil. And the Holy Spirit started popping up verses in my spirit just as I needed them. And that truth started illuminating in my life. And I started seeing the value of knowing the truth. Which has led me to a place today where it's not like eating crackers. It's my very substance that I have to eat every day. If I don't have it, I'm not alive. But I didn't get there overnight, and I'm not trying to tell you to. But I am trying to tell you to keep eating the crackers because you'll get to know the truth. And sometime very soon, it will illuminate in your life, and you'll be like, wow, that's what that meant. I had no clue. Come on. So you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So you got to know it, and then the truth does all the work. Right. Come on. Do you know why drug addicts do drugs? Because they go find a drug dealer and buy it. <laughs> well, 
I had an uncontrollable desire. You did. That's what lust is, uncontrollable desire. And God made a way of escape, and you gave into that. And sins equals death. And until you start really looking at yourself with the truth, you're going to keep re repeating that habit. Well, I can't break free from it. The doctors say, once you have a peace center, well, there you go again. You listen to the wrong kind of truth. Because who the Son sets free is free in peace. Yes, there's demonic things called pharmacia. Yeah, you come to overcomers, I'll teach you on all those things too. But you see how the truth right there just busted tons of stuff. So, John 14, 6. I keep forgetting I didn't print one of these out for you guys today. John 14, 6. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So who is the truth? Jesus. All right. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 1, 14. John 1, 14. You know, sometimes it gets redundant. They tell you you've got to say it three times for you all to get it. John 1, 14. I start to not do it every time. I hear pastors say, you've got to tell them three times. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. And the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And who was the word? Jesus. Jesus. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is also the word of God, and he is the truth. And if you want to get to know the truth, you need to get to know Jesus. You get to know Jesus by reading his word mm -hmm. and spending time. And we're also going to look and you get full of the Holy Ghost. But that's a whole other thing. So are you all with me? Yes. John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So in case you're like, well, I don't know if that's exactly what that means. There is the truth. It's right there. It says it plainly. Thy word is truth. Truth. So what's the truth? I don't know, Pastor. What are you dealing with? You know what? I, I want to encourage you. Start having a fun game. Every problem you have, or even you, you don't have to wait till you have it. Well, anybody who works has one. Just start looking up what the Word of God has to say about that truth. And when you need it, you'll have the prescription already there. You see what I'm saying? I didn't say judge them or try to help them. I said just get an answer for it. So be ready so you're ready to give an account if they ask. So what is the truth then? Jesus. My, my answer here for you, if we had a test, would be whatever the word of God says. The truth is whatever the word of God says. You know, through my years... I know sometimes people need to talk, and I have and I have empathy, and I don't love on people. But you know what? I ain't going to spend an hour listening to your pity party sob story because it ain't going to help nobody. You just took an hour of my time, and you feel worse, and now I got to deal with all your emotional baggage. When we just need to get to the truth of the matter, and you can get free, and we can both leave smiling. Now, some people that don't know me very well or understand me, sometimes they get upset because I won't listen to their hour-long speed. Now, saying I haven't listened to people for some time for certain things. Get to the truth of it. Don't judge me just yet. But do you see what I'm saying? The, the truth is who the Son sets free is free indeed. Do you know, under, you know, like a lot of times people show up, I have to focus on the negative upside, not the negative side, so I never curse that to you thing. But on the other side, I want to get on the positive part. But they'll show up and they'll have a heart full of unforgiveness and why and wondering why their love walk won't work. But not really. I mean, seriously. Because they are 100% justified according to the world for the way that they feel. And they haven't filtered it through the word of God and the truth there. And you can be 100% right and still be 100% wrong. How about this? The truth is, is that the enemy gets me to be a, a little, even just piffed a little bit with Pastor Jamie on the way to church here. I mean, the Lord's Bible says that he will God not even hear my prayers. Well, now all of a sudden, it's just not about me being piffed and my right to be piffed. I mean, she did something wrong and it just wasn't right. And I was just, you know, but now the, there's how many souls on the line? Because I, I feel like I got the right to be piffed. 
Come on. It's funny, but it's not funny, is it? And do you know I had to learn that truth? I had to learn that was a tool of the enemy. And the truth is, I don't got that. The Bible says I got to be quick to repent. That's the truth. I got to prefer her and love her the same way Christ loved the church. Well, he died, so I guess, you know, there went up my right to be piffed. <laughs> Come on, are you hearing me? But how did I get there? By working the word. By looking at what the word had to say about it. I didn't always like it. Come on, is somebody getting something this morning? Yeah. Yeah. How many in here has the enemy told you all week what you're not? That's right. Yes. How many of you decided you're going to go this week and find out what the word of God has to say about you? Yeah. I'm dealing with the negative stuff. Let's get a little more. I don't like that negative. It's not what it is. But the, the lies of the enemy. Either way. You know. Sometimes they're ours. Sometimes they're his. Get to the truth, get free, and then succeed. Because the truth always causes you to succeed. No matter what we're talking about. Your lies, his lies. When you get to the truth, it causes you to succeed. Amen. So there's no gray areas at all. In truth, John 4.23, John 4.23. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father... In spirit and in truth. So that sounds like truth's a really big deal to God. Y'all still with me? Yeah. That's a really big deal with God, then, isn't it? You know, where I came from, truth has always been a big deal, but we didn't handle it in a godly way. Like when I was in the world, and uh, I'm not proud, I've been talking about it a lot here lately, but. You know, the old outlaw bikers, I like to have 10 rules I live by. And if you crossed all 10 rules, you were dead to me. Except the problem was I didn't tell you what the 10 rules were. <laughs> I mean, it was no joke. But, and one of them was what we didn't have no, I had no use for a liar. I had no use for someone who wouldn't tell the truth. But I'm here to tell you that is nowhere near the same thing as the kind of truth that God is. Because there it's always about being caught in something. Where this kind of truth is always about setting you free. Amen. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This kind of truth. It's the, that your repentance is the gateway to freedom and, and truth is what unlocks the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Woo. You with me? Mm -hmm. So there's more worship him in spirit and in truth for the Father's seek is such to worship him. So if you want to be, you want to have glory come down and reign down, start worship him in spirit and in truth. That means start having a good look at what the Word of God has to say in your life. John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship him can do it when they feel like it on Sundays. <laughs> worship him in spirit and in truth. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, listen, you probably know a whole bunch of Sunday Christians that ain't none of them worth a plug nickel. You can't do nothing about that, but you can do something about you. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. Woo. Come on. Amen. Amen. John 8, 43. John 8, 43. You got, you got to know the truth. We started off with this. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? Yeah, I get asked all the time, why don't they understand? Well, they're not listening to the truth. They don't want to know the truth. They have no truth in them. And you're talking a language they don't hear. Well, then how can, how can they get it? The sun sets free. It's free indeed. Introduce them to the sun, and truth starts invading their life. John 8, 44. You are of your father, the devil, the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. And, you know, when I was a younger minister, that I used to use this to encourage me. I still do sometimes, but I kind of moved on to some other things. But if the devil's telling you something, 
He's a liar. Let's just sink in. He's a liar and there's no truth in him. He, you, he should be your greatest encourager. Well, you can't do that. You know you can't do that. That's impossible for you to do that. Da, 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 da. There were certain things when I was coming back to God before I gave my heart and made that choice. He was screaming at me. Well, you know you'll never be able to do that. You can't live without this and you can't live without that. Do you know what I learned? If he was telling me I couldn't, it was a promise from God that I could. Yeah. Well, how did you get to that? Because I went and found the truth in the word of God. <laughs> Who the sun sets free is free indeed. But he will lie to you as long as you let him. But if he's lying, if he's talking, he's lying. How do you know? It is said it right there in the word. That's the truth. So, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. He's the father of lies. That's who he is. Why are you talking about Satan? So you'll stop listening to him. So you'll get to the truth of the matter. Well, the doctor <laughs> said, I've only got 10 days to live, really. Huh. Well, the guy that made you, I think, has probably got a bigger say on the doctor. Mm -hmm. Well, what about this, this, and this? Well, now we know the disease to curse. Listen, you, you, can't stop the, you can't stop the mailman from delivering the mail, but you can sure turn return it to sender. You can resist it. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. What's that saying in a nutshell for some of you? The world would rather believe lies and believe the liar than to believe the truth. You can talk to your blue in the face and argue with someone. You're not going to get nowhere. But the Bible, well, here's the key that does. You ready? It's free. It goes on with another message. The Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. Mm -hmm. When you get full of the Holy Ghost, get full of the Word of God, you, you don't have to go in. When Jesus showed up, things started breaking and shaking. And people get in their, if you've ever heard me pray for people, they'll get in their right mind for a moment. Those demonic things will leave. And then all of a sudden, they can listen to some truth. Right? Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Some of you have been that way. You're like, well, it was clear when I was at church listening to the pastor. Now I'm just all confused. Well, what's that tell you? You're not in the truth. Get in the truth. What's the truth? The word of God. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Can you get much plainer than that? John 14, 17. John 14, 17. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth them, but ye know him where he dwelleth with you and shall be where? In you. In you. Well, so once you're filled, I may know the spirit of truth tells you don't do that, but he, everybody's wanting somebody to be a taskmaster, master, and that's the law. The spirit of God is not a taskmaster. He's a still small voice that says, hey, I don't know about that. The word over here says this. And you got a choice then to listen to the word or just blow right past it. And then you're going to have to answer yourself the truth of why you did that. Yeah. But how about some of you? The devil's told you everything you can't be and who, what you can't do. It's time you start telling him who you are. Amen. I'm a king's kid. Wow. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. <laughs> All right. That is the truth. Come on. He said, signs and wonders will follow them that believe. Well, you're trying to chase every revival meeting to get some sign and wonder when you should be the one out there doing them. He said, you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on. That's the truth, right? Why don't it happen? Because most people don't believe it. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Faith is reaching over the unseen realm and bringing it to the scene. Why don't they do it? Because they don't have found the truth of that being real yet. Well, where do I find it? In the word. We have a few old sayings there. If you work the word, the word works. If you don't work the word, it'll never work. Lots of people know the Bible. Very few people work the word. Because it's hard work. Because when you start digging in truth for one thing, 
truth will expose something else. Let us start dealing with this over here. But it will also cause you to rise up and shine. 